Hey YouTubers, this is going to be a series of videos that I create that will uh, help you learn how to build a chess game from scratch in the Java programming language, including an AI and a GUI and a game database, uh, all that good stuff. So let's jump right into it. Uh, here, what you can see on my screen is that I have downloaded and installed IntelliJ, which is basically a, an IDE or an integrated development environment. Uh, what this is going to allow me to do is to uh, write my code and my tests and to do debugging uh, all in one place. You may choose to use Eclipse or VI or Emacs, it doesn't matter, uh, but if you want to follow me along, go ahead and download IntelliJ. I'll include a link in the description box. Uh, so here I'm going to start by saying create a new project. It's going to be a Java project. And let's name our project JChess. Okay, and here we are. We can see in the left panel of our project, we have uh, external libraries, which we don't have any dependencies on yet, but we will soon, and uh, our actual JChess project. Here we have our an empty directory that represents our source code. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and click on that and I'm going to create our first class which is going to be the focus of this video and that class is going to be a uh, chess tile. I'm going to call it tile. So everybody knows from playing chess that a chess board consists of 64 tiles and in your mind you might look at it and see it as sort of a two-dimensional array right an eight by eight um, but uh, for the purpose of this video I'm going to uh, create uh, the abstraction for a single chess tile and we're going to number that chess tile from 0 to 63 to capture all 64 chess tiles so here we can say that we want to introduce a member field that represents the tile number so let's call it int tile coordinate, right? And so there's a couple different ways you can do this. You can have one class called tile that represents everything, or we can use some, define some polymorphic behavior, behavior and have um, sort of a, a common abstract tile class and two subclasses one that would represent an empty tile, that is to say a tile that has no pieces on it, and the other to uh, represent an occupied tile. Okay, so that's the approach that I'm going to choose to take. So let's see what methods we need to introduce. First, let's fill out our constructor. That will, This will allow us to create a uh, an individual tile. So let's say give it tile coordinate right and so what we're going to say is this tile this dot tile coordinate is equal to tile coordinate so when you construct a new instance of a tile uh, it will be assigned a tile coordinate uh, that's going to equal whatever you passed in to the constructor right and um, let's introduce a couple of methods that are going to be useful to us later the first method I'm going to introduce uh, is tile occupied. This is going to tell us whether or not a given tile is occupied or not. And right now you, you can obviously the ID is complaining but we'll fix that very shortly. Um, we've declared the method to be abstract. That is to say that it's going to be it's not going to be defined here in this class but in a subclass. And if we have an abstract method we will say that this Public abstract. So this class is abstract, right? And public abstract. And public abstract get piece. So, oops, piece get piece. So we haven't introduced this class yet, obviously, and we but we will very shortly. Um, but this is going to get the piece off of a given tile. So if we have an occupied tile, it'll return something. If it's an empty tile, obviously, it'll return, it will return null. 
So, okay, great. So now let's create the subclasses that are going to represent either an empty uh, tile or an occupied tile. So public static final class empty tile, right? And here's our empty tile constructor. And it's simply going to call the superclass constructor with the tile coordinate that's passed into it. And let's define some overridden methods. The first overridden method is going to be the isTileOccupied method. And public boolean is tile occupied. And this is going to be really easy to implement. This just returns false because by definition, it's empty. And let's see, what is this complaining about? Public abstract boolean is tile occupied. Did I misspell that? Huh, what is the, oh, that's right, because I did not extend from tile. That's why. Okay, and now it's complaining. And it's complaining that we haven't overridden all the methods that we need to override. So let's also override at override public piece get piece. And we know by, like we said, by definition, this is going to return null because it's not, it's, there is nothing on an empty tile to return. There is no piece on an empty tile to return. And so let, let's stop at this point and let's go ahead and introduce a new class called piece just to get rid of our compiler errors. And what we're, we'll do is we'll come back and we will uh, structure our code and create packages and clean it up. But for now, I just want to keep it simple here. Uh, we have two classes here. Notice tile and piece. Now tile compiles and it has a single reference to piece. Uh, but we haven't really defined what piece does yet. We will later. Um, so now we've defined the uh, empty <coughs> tile. Excuse me. <coughs> Let's go ahead and define the occupy tile. Okay. Now the only difference about this is that there actually is a piece defined on an occupied tile. So let's go ahead and declare that. And for an occupied tile, the constructor for an occupied tile is going to take the coordinate and the piece. Let's go tile coordinate, be consistent here. And piece tile. So in this version, we're first going to call the superclass constructor that's going to establish the tile coordinate. And this dot piece on tile is going to be equal to the piece that's passed into us in the constructor. And let's override our methods. Public boolean is tile. Oh, boolean is tile occupied. And what we're going to do is we're going to say return true. That's easy enough. And we're going to also override get piece. And that is just going to return this dot piece on tile. Great. So we can now see that um, we have our tile class. For the most part, this is done, right? So if you've gotten this far uh, and you've understood everything up to this point, um, then I think you've understood the most important aspects of this tile class. Um, in later videos, I'm going to come back 
and uh, we're going to improve upon this class a little bit and we're going to use use um, some some principles from uh, great programming books the the, the 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 principal book that I will be drawing inspiration from is Joshua Block's Effective Java and I'll provide a link to that in the description box as well but you're going to see that we're there's some um, transformations we can do to this class minor really that are going to make it uh, more robust and, and, and more easily testable and uh, more optimal if you will so I think uh, we'll stop here at this point um, we have a we've defined a class that represents a chess tile um, it takes as its uh, as a parameter a tile coordinate which it establishes and the key methods on there are whether the tile is occupied um, or not and to retrieve the piece on the tile and we have two uh, subclasses of this tile empty tile and occupied tile which define those behaviors